So I have a question for you. Do you want to find freedom and peace in your heart? Then you've come to the right place. <laughs> so in Psalm 51.7, we have the PowerPoint, please. Okay, it says there, can everyone read? Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will clean, I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Do you know what an hyssop, hyssop is? It's a plant used as a cleansing effect in connection with plague, leprosy, and chest ailment, and symbolically in cleansing the soul. That's why I placed it there. So at some point in time, do you believe that God can forgive you for something you've done? Even for a long time. If so, if you believe that, know that those thoughts are from, actually from your enemy, Satan. If you think that God cannot forgive you, right? So he will do almost anything to make us think God hates us and won't forgive us, right? So one of his favorite tricks is to encourage us to keep dredging up. You know, dredging, kailangan i, 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 ano tawag, yung ganun, iba, i, ikuha yung mga, mga sins natin, kailangan bumalik sa inyo. Di ba dredging? The sins of the past and uses our memory of them so that He can condemn us and tell us how terrible we are. That is why the Bible accuses Satan as the what? Accuser of our brothers. But his accusations are false, definitely. If you are in Christ, you think that they are not true. So don't believe your emotions and don't let the memories of the past defeat you. Okay? The Bible says in 1 John 7, the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sins. Okay? Amen to that. That is God's promise to you. And God doesn't lie. Agree? So, we are now in the heart of our series. You are about to discover forgiveness that is for real and forever. Indeed. <laughs> So just to guide you, here is our outline. You have it in your workbook, but let me go through it. Preparation to forgive others. That's part one. Part two, the process of forgiving other people. Part three, the peace from forgiving other people. Part two are the four steps to follow and forgive other people. Part three, the peace from forgiving other people. Okay, before we do that, let's commit our time to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humility and thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you for orchestrating, bringing me here, and some of us here who are here for the first time. We humbly ask you that you give us a listening ear and a receptive heart to accept your word to us. I pray you will make me your mouthpiece and only say the words that are pleasing and edifying. Be in our midst right now and fill this room with your radiance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, Dr. Helen Rose Veer, if I may have it, have it here, was a missionary doctor brutally raped while serving in Africa. But what did she do? She forgave those who wronged her and spent 20 years doing missionary work, service. If that happened to you, we'll still go back to the place of the crime? Hindi, di pa. But 
because she has the heart of a servant, she does that. And because she maybe wants to forgive them and share the word of God in the process. Right? And here's another one. Another outstanding woman of faith, Elizabeth Elliot. You are very familiar with Elizabeth Elliot, right? She forgave the man who savagely killed her husband. In fact, she continued to ministry, in ministry, to the very people who killed him. Can you imagine that? No. <laughs> Now, here's a video of, uh, you know her, some of you, not naman know, actually know, just, you just know of her, the video of Corey Ten Boom. You know? Okay, let's video it. Listen to the video. The source of our strength is Jesus Christ himself. And his cross shows us that we can accept suffering as a part of God's plan for this world. When I was in a concentration camp, one of the most terrible things I had to go through was that they stripped us of all our clothing and we had to stand naked. The first time was the worst. I said, Betsy, I cannot bear this. And suddenly it was as if I saw Jesus at the cross. And the Bible tells, they took his garments, he hanged there naked. And I knew he hanged there for me, for my sins. And by my suffering, I understood a fraction of the suffering of Jesus Christ. And it made me so thankful that I could bear my suffering. Love, so amazing, so divine, demands my life, my soul, my all. Some people are afraid to look at the cross. Are you? Don't be afraid. The cross is terrible. It is terrible how Jesus suffered. For if you had been the only person in the world, Jesus should have suffered for your sins. It was some time ago that I was in Berlin. And there came a man to me and said, Ah, Mr. Bohm, I am glad to see you. Don't you know me? And suddenly I saw that man that was one of the most cruel officers, guards in the concentra in concentration camp. And that man said, I have, I'm now a Christian, I have found the Lord Jesus. I read my Bible and I know that there is forgiveness for all the sins of the whole world, also for my sins. I have forgiveness for the cruelties I have done. But then I have asked God grace for an opportunity that I could ask one of my very victims forgiveness. And Fräulein Tambom, will you forgive me? And I could not. I remembered the suffering of my dying sister through him. But when I saw, when I experienced that I could not forgive, suddenly I knew I myself have no forgiveness. Do you know that Jesus has said that? When you do not forgive those who have sinned against you, my heavenly Father will not forgive you your sins. And I, I knew, oh, I am not ready for Jesus coming because I have no forgiveness for my sins. But I was not able, I could not, I could only hate him. And then I took one of these beautiful texts one of these boundless resources, Romans 5.5. 5. The love of God is shed abroad into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. And I said, thank you, Jesus, that you have brought into my heart God's love through the Holy Spirit who is given to me. And thank you, Father, that your love 
is stronger than my hatred and unforgiveness. That same moment, I was free. And I could say, brother, give me your hand. And I shook hands with him. And it was as if I felt God's love stream through my arms. You never touch so the ocean of God's love as that you forgive your enemies. Can you forgive? No, I can't either. But he can. <laughs> Were you touched? Yeah, can you just imagine, you know? He, she was able to see how the, her sister was being, um, uh, what's this? Brutally punished and all that. But at least she survived. So there's a purpose that she survived, right? So let's begin. So uh, the preparation to forgive other people. That's first. So in your notebooks, there's a blank there, so you have to, to write it down. Preparation number one is decide that you are going to forgive the people. Okay? So you have to really set it in your mind and in your heart that you are ready to forgive the people that have hurt you. Just decide na muna. Di ba? Because we're going through a process which you and I will go together. So, so, so decide the people you want to forgive. Number two, preparation is name the people you want to forgive. Okay. Name, maybe you can start doing that now because we are going to have an uh, application time on this, no? Name the people you have, who have hurt you, wounded you the most, using only initials, if confidential. Consider your parents, siblings, relatives, spouse, children, friends, neighbors, strangers, school, church, business, government, tribe, and so forth and so on. Anyone that you can think of that you think uh, they have offended you or you have an unforgiveness heart. Include from childhood even those who, who died. Yes. I will give you time to... <laughs> To write the names, okay? Those who have hurt you the most. So I ask Ajaira uh, if kunya re kumulag dun sa notebook ninyo, meron pang papel. Baka masyadong madami eh, ha? Jaira. <laughs> Baka kailangan yellow pad. <laughs> ha? Oo nga eh. Ay, hindi ba? Somehow, there are people that we have not forgiven long time ago. So, isipin yung mabuti, sino ba yun na nakasakit sa akin? Na hindi ko ma-forgive. Okay? <laughs> anyway, dun sa a preparation tree, here, list a specific. No, so, you have written the names. Okay? So, sa preparation tree, you list the specific trespasses and wounds pick two or three people uh, umpisa muna kayo sa isa dalawa kasi pag masyadong marami kailangan matatagal lang kayo diyan sa paglista parang naglilista kayo ng utang or something <laughs> so pick two or three people and list everything hurtful that person did don't evaluate Hindi yun, ito si ano, kasi ginawa niya ito, hindi ganon, di ba? Don't evaluate, just describe. Include wounds that were done intentionally and accidentally. Physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. In a few words, write down also how you felt when that happened. Importante yun. Di ba? 
you write the how you were uh, wounded or were offended, di ba? You describe it. Ano yung feeling nyo? Sulat nyo dyan. Huwag kayo mahiya. No copying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> of course, hindi pwede. Hindi, baka pag-copya it. Ay, oo nga pala. Oh, ganyan. Oh, okay. Yun, yun, ano, write down what, uh, in a few words, what you are feeling. Sasabihin mo, Nasaktan ako masyado eh. Kasi she insulted me at the point of insulting me na. Hindi ba? E siyempre, when you are insulted, hindi ka kaagad makaka-resback eh. Hindi ba? Parang nasya ka eh. Ha, ginawa niya to? Naku, Diyos ko, hindi ko ako makaano. Pero and you, well, you sa, when you sit down ng matagal na, ay sana ginawa ko ito, sana naupakan ko, ganun. Yung ganon, yung mga, na, maaano mo yun eh. Hindi ba? Yun. I, anyway, so, because when we fail to forgive others, we sentence ourselves to life of, what? Bitterness. Naramdaman nyo ba yun? Oo. Oh, yun pala eh, kaya sulat na kayo. <laughs> ano ano dyan? Hindi ba? So, just continue writing kung ano yung pumapasok sa mind ninyo. So, ask God to shine His light into your darkness. Search out any bitterness and unforgiveness and turn it over to Him. Because you will be glad you did. I will help you pray. You pray, Lord, help me to be an excellent forgiver. Even when it's hard. It's hard. Lalo na best friend mo pa. Kapatid mo pa. O kaya mother mo. Hindi ba? O boyfriend. Boyfriend. Ganyan. Hindi ba? When, show me anyone against whom I've unknowingly held hard feelings. Di mga hard feelings. Di ba pag nag-aaway kayo, kunyari nagbati na, oh no hard feelings ha. Sabihin mo naman, oo. Pero pag talikod, hmm, gigil. Di ba? Yung ganyan, nangyayari yun eh. So, so you will say, I forgive them just as you have mercifully, mercifully forgiven. Amen. Di ba? Uh, forgiven me. <laughs> Amen. That's the prayer. Okay? You pray that. Okay, so continue, continue uh, writing down the names. At this point in time, I'd like to call my friend, my disciple, to share her uh, venture <laughs> experience in unforgiveness. Let's welcome Ruth Francisco. Good morning. I grew up with a father who was a loving and caring man. However, because of these said, said traits, one of my dad's weaknesses was womanizing. One unfaithful act after another, I witnessed my mom suffer emotionally and mentally. She eventually became detached from her children and was easily irritable of petty things. When we would have disagreement, she would hurt me physically and verbally. On several occasions, her beating would hurt me so much that I cried to the point of getting numb from the pain. With all this happening in my life, I began to rebel and harbor hatred and resentment. And because of this, I made a vow to myself that I will not marry a man who is a womanizer and, um, and I will not be an irritable wife. At the age of 27, I got married to a kind-hearted and hard-working man who upholds good moral standards. We were blessed with a wonderful daughter, and so I thought to myself that the life I have dreamt of, I already have. A family, as a family, we went to church every Sunday and even joined community services. All was going well 
But there was a longing in my heart that I was searching for something else that I could not explain. Although we went to church regularly, I felt empty, unhappy, and unloved. I kept asking the Lord what I was feeling. What is this negative emotions? Only after my colleagues shared to me the gospel, and then I began to realize what was missing in my life. It was Jesus. He was the missing piece in my life, and only him can satisfy the longings of my heart. In 2007, I quit my job, and our family moved to the Middle East for a better job opportunity for my husband. After a year, I decided to go back to the Philippines to finish my master's. I thought again, all is well with my family and along with my newfound faith in Jesus and a better financial status. As Jesus' follower, I thought that the Lord will shield my marriage from any serious problem. However, I received a call from my husband that he was in love with another woman and he would leave me and my daughter. <laughs> I was enraged and felt deeply betrayed. My daughter and I immediately flew back to the Middle East to salvage what was left of my marriage. Because of his act of infidelity, my husband and I frequently fought, which left no room for peace at our home. I was afraid that my daughter will grow up without a father and, I, and that I would have a broken family, which was worse than what my parents had. Away from the church community and a small group, I did not have any support system and I found myself drifting away from God. My heart was consumed with rage, hate and resentment. There was a time that I could not take the, heart, the hurt anymore and I tried to commit suicide twice, but thankfully did not succeed. My husband grew tired of all the intensive fighting and so he decided to end his affair with the other woman and I was relieved, but there was still no peace in my broken heart. In 2014, we decided as a family to go back to the Philippines for good. I went back to CCF to join a couples D group, but still I could not forgive my husband for what he did. I, I told myself that I will only forgive him if I saw remorse on his face because of what happened. For years, I was waiting for him to say sorry to earn my forgiveness. I know that I have to forgive, but I kept on asking God, how can I forgive my husband? Lord, it is too hard. Please help me. Then God made me realize that I allowed my hate to take into bitterness and I gave into unforgiving spirit that became a bondage of sin. He impressed in my heart that this anger will only damage my emotional health and well-being and it will also hinder my spiritual growth with Jesus Christ. God spoke to my heart through his word that he has given me all the spiritual resources to forgive others. As the verse says in Matthew 6, 14, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Through reading this, I forgave him by God's grace. Thank you. We had an opportunity to attend a CCF Family Breakthrough Seminar, wherein we learned how to handle conflicts in a godly way. How did I hurt you? How can I improve and say, please forgive me? He asked for forgiveness and I forgave him. We reconciled and peace came into our home. I became free of my rage and unforgiveness. 
age or anger no longer had the power to rule over my life and my decision. When I forgave my husband, it did not mean that what he did was right. It means that I have, I have surrendered all that had happened to the Lord. I am no longer holding on to unforgiveness and bitterness. I am freely to live fully for Jesus Christ. Now, my family had been regularly attending Sunday service, and we have been talking over the discussion questions together. My husband and I have been part of a D group that I am grateful for, and I have been blessed with my daughter, who is now an Elevate lay volunteer and a D group leader. Thank you. Please pray for us that we will continue to live and love each other as Christ loves us. I am Ruth Francisco, once struggled and shackled by the bondage of unforgiveness, now freed by the Lord Jesus Christ, who forgave me of all my sins and gave me the strength to give to forgive others. Thank you. Let's just say a prayer for her so God will use her mightily. Lord God in heaven, we just... Uh, Lift up to you, Ruth, here, Lord, that she has the heart to forgive her love, her most loved one, her husband, dear Father. So I pray that you will continue to, uh, your love will abound in this couple and then in the family, that your grace and mercy will forever be in the family, that they will grow in the love of you, that you will be gracious to all of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pards. Mm -hmm. Now, you will be writing it down in the chart. The person, do not, what they did to you, how did you feel? The person, what did they do? She insulted me, mga ganyan, ano? She, what, ano pa ba yung mga offenses ng mga babae? She pulled my hair, hindi yon ano? The she stole my boyfriend. The, the pretty on. Okay. So how did you feel? You nang isulat nyo. Kailangan yung isulat. It has to be in writing, always, di ba? Kasi pag yung sa mind niyo, mabubura lang. Oh, di ba? Di ka nagsusulat. <laughs> Tapos na. Okay. So, do you want peace, ladies, again? So, Jonathan Lockwood Dewey says, Forgive others, not because they deserve forgiveness, but because you deserve peace. Mm. Correct, Bayan? Okay. So, okay. Basta, basta continue kung ano lang yung pumasok sa inyong isip. Kasi kaagad hindi na naman ma maiisip agad yun eh. Kung ano yun yung ginawa. Kunyari, yung mami, mami ninyo, anong ginawa sa inyo? I'm sure, di ba? Ang minsan, ang ano natin, ang uh, Achilles heel natin, yung mga parents, di ba? Hindi ako pinayagan sa ganito. Hindi ako binigyan ng allowance. Di ba, naghihinakit ka sa ganyan. Okay? So, now we are going to part two. But you continue uh, doing your workbook. So, the process to forgive other people. Okay, step one, open your heart in order to forgive other people. So it says there, I hereby choose not to perfect myself from my heart wounds any longer, but open my heart completely in order to forgive everyone else. Set them free and end all my torments. So step two, step two will be extend compassion to each person that you need to forgive. You have to grant compassion to the people you are about to forgive and describe your empathy and compassion like I know my parents were under much stress and alcohol made them abusive. Or I know they didn't mean to hurt me. 
or they had been abused by someone else and were acting out on that pain. Oh, they just lost their job or their young unmarried daughter is pregnant. Diba? Yung mga, yung mga ganon. So you have to have uh, compassion for them. Maybe may pinag... Ang sabi, sinasabi natin, may pinagdadaanan. Diba? So iisipin nyo, ah, kaya ganito siya. Ah, kaya pala ganun siya. But her action for that is not, of course, yung, yung right. But you have to understand her, why she did that. The chart here now, the next chart, will be the person again. It could be the same person that you wrote on the first uh, page. And describe your empathy and compassion. Yun. Pwedeng nasunugan siya kasi kaya ganyan siya ma ang attitude. O naswindle siya kaya ganyan ang, na ang attitude. Ang dami, ang dami mga <laughs> rason. Hindi ba? I'm sure you have a lot of uh, reason why you uh, have to forgive and you, why you have to have compassion to that person. Hindi ba? Who in the Bible has compassion? Jesus Christ. Hindi ba? He had compassion on us. He forgave us all our sins. Hindi ba? Shed blood on the cross for us. So list the hardest people to forgive. Yung hardest. Is it your husband? <laughs> Usually, yes, okay. Usually, it's your, yung nire sa iyo eh. Your loved one. Mm -mm. Diba? Oh, nang hiram ng pinautang ko, pero wala na, hindi na nagbayad. Na, na, na ano na sa... Tubig, yung utang sa tubig. Ano bang tawag doon? Ha? Lista sa tubig ba yun? Ibig sabihin, hindi na babayaran yon, Hindi ba? So, describe nyo ulit, tapos how, how do you feel about it? Hindi ba? Isipin nyo nang isipin. Pag may naisip kayo, balik kayo doon sa chart. Okay? Mm. Step three. Step three is release each person from your inner heart prison. It says there, when you were wounded, especially repeatedly or deeply and did not choose to forgive, you moved down that poisonous slide of unforgiveness which we took up last week and finally put the person in the prison of your heart. For what they did. Nandito lahat yun eh. Kaya kayo nagkakasakit. Hindi ba? Nagde-depression. Kasi yun ang laman ng utak niya eh. Yun? Hindi ko talaga makalimutan yung ginawa niya sa akin. Magbabayad siya. Ng iba, sa ibang araw. <laughs> Ganyan. Hindi ba? So yung slighted forgiveness, again, is unforgiveness, bitterness, anger. Uh, ano pa ba yun? Revenge, which you will take next week. And uh, yun, yun ang mga slide of unforgiveness. And then you finally put the person in the prison in your heart, di ba? For what they did. Maybe you even have said, I never, I will never forgive her. Nasabi nyo na ba yun? Sa totoo lang. Oh, hindi ba? Oo. Oh. Pero, pero ngayon, masasabi niyo pa ba yun? Na pinag-aaralan niyo na itong 70 times 7? Hindi na. Oh. That's why you are all here. Hindi <laughs> ba? <laughs> okay. So it says there also, next slide, is to picture the person in your heart inside a cage of your prison bars. Imagine niyo na yung, yung, yung person... Nandito, nakakulong, nakakulong sa heart ninyo. Ngayon, picture yourself on the outside of the prison door expressing your compassion. Sige na nga, kawawa naman. Ano yan, i-forgive ko na lang, di ba? And then you picture yourself opening the door stating, I release you 
fully for what you did. Wag labas sa ilo, ha? I release. Para lang masabi. <laughs> Hindi yon, Di ba? So picture yourself feeling wonderful freedom as you embrace them. Di ba? Picture them weeping with regret for what they did, but joyful at your release. Hindi ba? Uh, picture din lahat yan, di ba? Have an imaginative uh, scenario in your mind. I remember before, in my tennis days, <laughs> there was this person that, uh, she's not a member of the club, okay, if I may say so, but she, she is uh, acting like one, like a member. So, as, an, ang ano kasi doon, ang maglalaro, yung mga members muna, or you can play with a member. Okay? Oh, she was there early. So, okay, we played two sets na muna. Sabi ko, sige, paanuhin na natin si, ano, kung sin ba yun, si pangalan, no mention. <laughs> so, <laughs> sabi namin, oh, sige, pabanik na kami, no? Sabi niya, sabi niya, uh, oh, sige, big, ano, baba ka na, ikaw na naman. Aba, galit. Sabi niya ganun. Ha? Huh? I'm not playing anymore. Sabi niya ganun, ano? Nagpumunto siya sa, ano? Sa washroom. What? Eh, sabi ko, eh, expression ko nun. What the heck? Sabi ko, ano? Hindi ba? <laughs> hindi naman yung, hindi ko naman, what the heck? Sabi ko naman, what the heck? Sabi ko ganun, ano? Sabi niya, alam mo sagot? What the heck din? Hi? Hi? Ay, away na. So, Siyempre, Christian na ako nun. I'm trying to share with her. So, tahimik ako. Pero, haba, ano kayang gagawin ko dito? No? Sana umalis na lang. Ayun niya, no? pero hindi siya umalis. So, nagbihis na siya. Tapos nun, umupo pa siya dun sa, sa chair ng, uh, may, may table doon. Ako naman nakagano na sa kanya. Sabi, umupo pa, kala ko uwi na. Sabi niya ganon. <laughs> Sabi niya ganon. Ah, I want for you to ask forgiveness. Sabi sa akin, are you talking to me? Or gusto mo sabihin, who, me? <laughs> Sabi kong ganun, ha? Huh? Sabi ko, what did I do ba na, ano, pinapaano na, na pinapalaro ka na, kina, ka na nga eh. Ayaw mo pa. So sabi niya, tapos nagali siya siguro, kasi nga ako yung Christian lang doon sa tennis court, ano? Aba, tumayo? Sabi niya, who are you? Who do you think you are? Huh? I'm a child of God. I don't know about you. <laughs> Hindi ko naman sinabi. <laughs> Hindi ko naman sinabi. <laughs> Pero natimeme ako doon. Sabi ko, hi. Sabi kong ganon. Eh, may kasama ko. Kumagano'n sa akin. Tetsi, huwag mo nang patulan. Kasi nagagalit siya. Ewan ko ba't nagalit? Hindi lang nakalaro. Gusto ko na gusto ko sabihin, bakit? Member ka ba? <laughs> Hindi ko naman magina noon. <laughs> Hindi ba? But anyway, so, uh, ano ba nangyari noon? Tagal na eh. So, alam nyo, ngayon ko lang naalala to. Kasi I ask God to, to bring to me also who are the persons, no? But right there and there, na-forgive ko naman siya, na-embrace ko naman. Siyempre, kailangan pakita mo yung pagka-Kristyano mo. <laughs> Hindi ba? <laughs> o oh, yun. Sabi, nag-sorry naman siya. Pero gusto, mm, gusto kong ganunin eh. <laughs> so anyway, para sabihin sa'yo, who are you? You're always saying verses, mga ganyan-ganyan. And so, what's wrong with the verses? Gusto kong ganunin eh. <laughs> so, siyempre, quiet ka lang, hindi mo papatulan. Kasi non-Christian naman eh. So yun, pumasok sa isip ko, I thought maybe I would share. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, so na-release ko na siya sa prison niya. But anyway, uh, may anecdote pa. Pagpupunta yan sa office, ay, sa office, sa ano, sa tennis court, ganyan. Di nakaupo na kami doon. Eh, ang haba ng buhok niya, para siyang diwata. No? Sabi ko sa kasama ko dito, may gunting ka ba dyan? <laughs> Bakit? <laughs> Parang, <laughs> gusto namin putulan yung buhok niya. Haba, 
Kasi kami, pag nagano ano, naka, nakaganyan pa. Kasi pag tennis mo, gaganyan eh. Pero siya, baliwata. Diwata ng Baguio, taga Baguio eh. Hi, chismosa. Oh, anyway, step number four. <laughs> step number four is forgive each other, each person for each wound. Remember that forgiveness includes done free from your heart prison and then forgiving them for each wound. Pick the person you wounded that who wounded you the most and then say these sentences out loud out loud quietly. Okay? Making sure that your heart matches your word. Now this is the test now. So are you done with uh, listing down the names? Sinong hindi obedient yan? <laughs> Sinong ayo <ayaw> magobey? <laughs> Okay, let's do an application exercise. I want you all to stand up, find a partner, and face each other. <laughs> okay, you face each other, you pretend that she is the one that you will forgive. Anya <laughs> So you imagine, kunyare, husband, di ba? O kaya anak, o kaya mother, o kaopisina, who, who, sinong nagtatrabaho dito? Okay, name, I've decided to forgive you right now from my heart and from every wound. You imagine, ha? Kunyare, mother mo, patay na. Kunyare, yun ang mother. Di ba? Name what they did. Oh, na slander ako eh. You first slandered me, stole from me, flirted with my husband. Meron ganon, ha? And how did they, that make you feel? Okay, are we done? Ladies, beautiful ladies. Okay. Okay, wipe your tears now. <laughs> okay. We'll go to step five. Are you ready? Okay. Step five is bless and do good to the person. When you bless the person who wounded you, you are fulfilling your highest calling of responding the way that Jesus did when he was severely and brutally unfairly, and repeatedly wounded. We are to be fountains through which Jesus can flow as rivers of living water in blessing to everyone. Now, if, you, if the person is not here, the one that you have to forgive, I suggest you seek them out. You seek her out. Diba? Pero na lang yung medyo uh, she passed away or he passed away na. Pero yung living pa, try, you pray kung pwedeng uh, uh, magawa ninyo ito. Kasi uh, ma ano sa kalooban, ma marirelieve kayo. Believe me. Di ba? You try, you pray. You pray for an opportunity to have that kind of, uh, uh, what's this, yung forgiveness. Hindi ba? Makakatulong yun sa inyo. Hindi na kayo magkakasakit. Hindi naman. <laughs> yung, uh, alam nyo na, yung bitterness, anger, wala na. Hindi ba? So, as I said, we are to be flowing like the rivers of living water. Hindi ba? In blessing to everyone. You have to stay at the source Closely guarding your faith in Jesus Christ and your relationship to Him. And there will, there will He be a steady flow into the lives of others. Diba? Because you show uh, empathy, sympathy with no dryness and deadness whatsoever. Because you are alive in Christ. Eh. Wag kayong papatay-patay na kwan. Diba? You have to be alive because 
Christ is in you. Di ba? Tapat wala na yung shyness. Because Christ will give you the boldness to seek that person, whoever it is. Di ba? It is Christ in you. You know that song? Di ba? It is Christ in you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Stay at the source. Who is the source? Closely guarding your faith in Jesus Christ and your relationship to Him. And there will be a steady flow into the lives of others with no dryness. Part 3. We're now in part 3. So how many minutes do I have? I, I cannot see. Okay. The peace from forgiving other people. So when you bless the person who wounded you, you are fulfilling your highest calling. Diba? We said that already. So peace from the peace from forgiving others, no? The peace from to forgive maliata. Mali. Just read your <laughs> just read your ano. Typo yan, typo. Okay. But you know what I mean. Okay. Prayer. Confess your sins to God related to your unforgiveness. You have to confess. Sanay na kayo dyan. You confess to God every day, di ba? No. Oh, see? Dun sa may, ano, unforgiveness. So, Frederick Bonner said, to confess your sins to God is not to tell God anything God doesn't already know. Until you confess them, however, they are the abyss between you. The abyss. You know what an abyss is? Ang, ang lalim non, di ba? So when you confess them, they become the, uh, ano sinabi niya? Golden gate. So you're all familiar with the golden, gray, uh, golden gate bridge. So we will never be cleansed until we confess we are dirty. Because sin is dirty, Right? And we will never be pure until we admit we are filthy. Diba? We are filthy rugs before we came to Christ. And we will never be able to wash the feet of those who have hurt us unless we allow Jesus, the one we have hurt, to wash ours. So you see, that is the secret of forgiveness. You will never forgive anyone more than God has already forgiven you. Only by letting him wash your feet, you can have strength to wash those of another. It's still hard to imagine? Is it still hard to consider the thought of forgiving the one who hurt you? Maybe there are some of you, talagang nasaktan to the hilt. Meron ganun, di ba? Hindi natin alam, di ba? So that's why they are uh, attempting on, on drugs, they get depression, and they commit suicide, yung mga ganyan. Si Ruth, dalawang beses, pero buti na lang, hindi natuloy. Okay? <laughs> Baka ano lang ininom mo, ano, anyway. Hi, ano ba yan? Okay, peace. The next one is... <laughs> There is no love without forgiveness, and there's no forgiveness without love. Okay, so I'll show you some verses to remind us of God's love, faithfulness, and forgiveness. This is in closing. John 8, 36. Who has memorized it? Meron ako. Okay. John 8, 36 says, If the Son sets you free, you will, okay, do you believe that? That's a promise. And then, uh, 2 Corinthians 3.13. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is, there is freedom. Yes. Psalm 116, 16 to 17. Lord, I am your servant. Yes, I am your servant born into your household. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving 
and call on the name of the Lord. And then 1 Peter 2.15, live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. And lastly, Acts 24.16, Paul says, in this hope, I strive always to maintain a clear conscience before God and man. You see, your conscience must be first be void of offense toward God. Next slide, please. Before it is void of offense. Even when the eyes of the world are on you, hoping you will be politically correct in how you minister the gospel, Stick to the truth of his word because your conscience is void of offense towards God. Is that understood? Okay. So let's pray if you understood everything. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's bow our heads. Lord, I choose to be a woman of faith. You have never forsaken me. You've never left me on my own. You are entirely trustworthy, and I praise you for providing everything I truly need. Like the Apostle Paul, help me to strive to have a conscience without offense toward you and men. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Thank you very much, and God bless us all. <laughs>